for starters, you could bit uh, introduce Arxin. Like, how did you all come together in the beginning? Let me start. Uh, uh, me and Andrew used to work together, and we uh, found out that we have a similar musical tastes, and we tried to come up with some music. And actually, some of the stuff we came up years ago actually got into the album. Uh, yeah, we released today. Uh, so yeah, that's how it started. Then uh, Demon joined us with the keyboard player, uh, Cesare. And we had multiple years of uh, nice rehearsals and uh, um, composing music. Yeah, when we first uh, tried playing with uh, with Alex, <clears throat> we were both playing guitar at the time, and uh, we just uh, sat there and we, we were jamming for hours, basically, and uh, recording some of the ideas we came up with, uh, throwing out some of the other ones, and uh, it, it was pretty much just a lot of fun, and uh, we have no no exact plans what to do with that or something. We just figured we enjoyed it we wanted to play more music so and then uh, like we decided I... to make it into a, a project and uh, i started playing the bass because we couldn't find a bass player and all that stuff uh not exactly like, like that because i remember what happened then i happened <laughs> yeah. yeah uh and i told uh, organizational the... force yeah yeah the... true Something like organizational force major, uh, because I told uh, those two musicians I'll be using the term in the future. Remember it, musicians. It's not a good. It's not a good word. I told those two musicians that two guitar players won't do. We need someone that thinks bass. So Andrew had to for quite a while to forget that he knows guitar, and uh, he learned to think like a bass player, because uh, I'm a drummer. And I need uh, my bass. Otherwise, yeah, uh, that's true. It, that's true. It, it, it just doesn't work. It's it's not yeah. a new thing for me to forget uh, some instrument. So easy. Yeah, I, I think like uh, me and Andrew are we are multi instrumentalists. So we both play piano. Uh, well, he plays a lot of instruments, but just it, the guitar, and the piano. Yeah. It's easier to name what Andrew doesn't play. Yeah, that's true. Anyways, yeah, that's basically how it started. Some material is is also uh, uh, on the debut EP is uh, from years back. So how long have you been at it? And how would you kind of uh, describe your sound and vision in your own words? Uh, yeah, we've been uh, doing that for 15 years, I think, with some um, pauses and so like, like with varying intensity, I'd say, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. we've been doing it for 15 years and uh, for a while it wasn't like we were just experimenting. And then uh, for some time we were actually working on the, uh, on this project in particular. And uh, when it first started, we thought that we were going to play uh, death metal or maybe progressive death metal. It uh, didn't exactly work out like that because uh, like we actually enjoyed playing a little bit more more mellow and more um, cerebral, I don't know, more intricate stuff. So it, it moved more to like progressive art metal, we could call it that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that would be great. The good thing, the, the, the thing I liked a lot is that uh, we instantly agreed that we want to play instrumental, which is, um, I think, uh, a lot of fun, especially if you want to play some like somewhat more complex music. Uh, instrumental works better and for more emotional things i think maybe vocals work best so that's that's yeah. what we've decided and actually even in the album itself uh, the styles vary greatly so some of the tracks are like anger is uh, quite heavy it's actually closer to death metal and a lot of the material is actually from the time where we just started and uh, some of the things are not metal at all like uh, acceptance for example and some of them are progressive metal something, whatever. 
yeah, it's, it's yeah. really hard so, to to name a style because uh, first of all, because we are not good at naming styles, and uh, second, because it's uh, it's kind of different between the tracks. I'd yeah, say that. Uh, okay, sorry. Alex. Yeah, well, uh, we started on uh, on like uh, we we both liked the open yeah. bands, so it's, it was like a idea to play something like that, but not exactly. And you can sometimes hear it in the songs, but it's quite different uh, as well too. So. so there's a lot of influence, and there's a lot of other influences. Yeah. Mm. I tried li really hard to keep uh, whichever music uh, those two produce away from Opeth. Not a secret between us. Because you failed. Gen uh, you failed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you failed miserably. Uh, it's still close. Uh, <laughs> not miserably. There's one to uh, song that uh, is really Opeth, but uh, I was pretty good with the other ones. Uh, Mm. I tried a lot to stay away from that band, uh, which generally influenced all of us. And uh, I tried to make a lot of organizational steps to make those two musicians... Uh, Finish mm. something at, at uh, some moment of time. Output their best. Meaning that, um, at least initially... Uh, they didn't uh, believe in themselves uh, that much, but generally they put music, they speak, they speak music, I just had to capture it. Uh, whichever they do, they do music, and uh, they do fine music. Um, and then it's just a matter of organizational steps not to fuck it up. I'm getting the impression that it's uh, quite a process for you to, uh, you know, work on a song so maybe we could dig into that creative process maybe through the single depression if you could uh, tell a bit about the evolution of that song that, that's oh. actually a good example because it's uh, <laughs> kind of uh, illustrates our process uh, pretty well i think and it's also one of our favorite ones uh, so usually uh, alex is the one to start uh, to to come up with initial ideas i'd say i i have some initial ideas but like 70% or 80% of the initial ideas come from Alex. He usually comes up with an idea, brings it, uh, and uh, basically I, I listen to it and say, nah, it doesn't really work like that, but I like the ideas. And then I add some layers to it and try to organize it. Uh, and we're talking about organization again, but this is like the musical stuff. So I I tend to work on the composition, on the... Um, how on the transition between the parts on the so basically to shape it up into some uh, in, give it a form because usually the the material itself is quite rich and uh, I cannot come up with things like Alex does but uh, I enjoy shaping them up I enjoy bringing it all together and making it a more cohesive uh, experience for the listener and and for us as well and uh, Demon is uh, kind of helping us. Uh, actually finish at some point of time and uh, uh, keep our shit together. Uh, so, in, uh, for example, in Depression, Alex came depression. up with the, the main mm -hmm. theme, uh, the, the starting part, the dum, 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 da, dum, 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 this thing, and, uh, and most of the layers, by the way, the, the rest of it. So the sound of it came from him. Uh, and, um, and I was thinking, yeah, that, that, that sounds really good, but where does it go after that? What what do what do we do with that? So I came up with the bass line that goes in the refrains, and that uh, gives it like an uh, this emotional part, and makes it uh, more contrasting between the parts. Um, it worked really well, of course. Then Alex added some layers to that by like adding the guitars, and uh, so basically the adding to the dynamic. So he understood the idea I brought in added to that and then it was just uh, working out the details which took just just several years we worked yeah yeah work on on work of uh, each other basically so i started yeah. with the idea andrew added the best uh, bass parts then i added solos uh, and demon added the uh, drums yeah. so it, it's oh. a it's a back and forth between mostly between us two but then uh 
but then I Often, uh, with, with some supervision from demon as well um. uh, this is just a funny reference song because uh, as far as I remember in their iterations uh, they fucked up the initial drums uh, uh, yeah. to the point yeah. of being Frankenstein yeah. so yeah. all of uh, initially this so uh, song was presumed complete I think before our revolution or around the revolution yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Which the one? Over 10, like, let's say over 10 years ago it was kind yeah. of yeah. complete ish but it, yeah. it didn't but, sound well but, uh, but uh, for that exact song I was uh, recording uh, drums a year ago again uh, yeah. because uh, whichever was um, whichever came up in the iterations was MS so we had to replace one ba a bass note and a whole <laughs> lot of drums because uh, generally uh, what was uh, initially 10 years ago just didn't work with the layers uh, it ah, was too, too, too much information, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, but, but uh, actually, actually, one of the things is fun. One of the things is fun. So I actually came up to the studio to record this one bass note, uh, and uh, <laughs> because because it didn't fit after we changed the drums, after we changed everything, and it it had to be uh, changed. So I came up. The sound engineer knew nothing about what we are planning. So I came up. I took the bass. I tuned it. I said, okay, so go to this like uh, bar number whatever it's, um, 127 okay we found it like, okay let's start he starts i'm like bow. okay done thank you bye <laughs> <laughs> and this session. comes up uh, the fuckery that, uh, that's been going with the band uh, for mm, whichever uh, we I are think, having think... fun yeah, but this is fuckery, but but fun fuckery. I'm celebrating, okay. guys. Yeah. Among all the fun having, you know, a song called Depression and album called On the Death and Dying speak of pretty heavy themes. So what kind of drew you to explore these? So at some point we collected several, several songs, several, they were in the making, but we essentially got the idea and... Um, I think uh, I came up with the idea of having uh, of making a um, an, an album, a um, how's it called the concept album? album concept concept yeah. album. Um, initially, we called it uh, Kubler Kubler Gross, uh, uh, as an author of the of this concept of uh, <clears throat> stages of grief stages of acceptance uh, of death. Um, yeah, so for, for many years, it, it, it was called Kubler-Ross in, in our ID, in, in, in MP3, MP3 uh, yeah. ID text. Um, yeah, and the, the idea was to kind of have this, um, so the, the initial idea, actually, I remember it came from the fact that we were still thinking that we are playing dead metal and we were like what 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 do we play about it's it's boring to just play some random stuff we want to actually make a concept album make write about something because it it helps with the structure of the music and it, it it's more fun to work on concept albums actually uh, and uh, you know, what do we write about well it's death metal let's write something about death maybe uh, and uh, but then we came up with this alex came up with the idea uh, to write about the five stages of grief. And it just, uh, it works really well because we just, we have the structure of the album right away. It's like five, uh, five compositions, each one for each stage. And then we started to working on top of that. Like what are the later criticisms of, of the theory? It's that uh, those stages actually uh, get mixed uh, between each other and it is not so easy. And we're like, well, we don't want to ruin the whole structure, but we want to reflect that somehow. And we decided that we could uh, uh, use some uh, internal references and uh, themes, say, themes songs, from, yeah. from some of the emotions and actually reuse them in different contexts so that they sound differently, but they still remind of some of the emotions that were before that. And also it has uh, this, as soon as we are, like, since we are uh, describing an emotional 
voyage of a person. Uh, so we can actually think of what happens to that person and how do we show it in the music? How how do we um, how do we show it so that both the uh, the songs themselves are interesting? So something happens in them. And then it still makes sense in the context of this album. And an example is, for example, we have this uh, bargaining, the third stage. And um, we have the main theme that shows the bargaining itself. And it's uh, kind of uh, chaotic in nature somewhat. And it shows how the person is struggling to find a solution. And then there is this middle part that is... uh, um, It's actually really calm and... and, uh, it's uh, kind of utopian sounding, and that represents the moment where the person um, found some solution that is not a real solution because death is inevitable and uh, nothing can save him. Himself but but, but, herself, but yeah. yes, but this uh, protagonist convinced himself that it works, and uh, he's like tricking himself to believe in this utopia that everything's fine and uh, he's going to be okay because he's. He's found some snake oil or something, and then. Uh, but this, it it starts uh, contrasting with reality. It doesn't pass reality checks from time to time, and uh, the illusion starts to uh, like develop cracks all, all around. And we show that with some dissonance appearing at li- a little at first, and then more and more, and then uh, the whole illusion shatters, and uh, he's back to the bargaining stage. So uh, we we were thinking of it as a like emotional voyage and we are showing different stages of that inside each emotion separately uh, and it was fun working uh, with music like that because even when you don't have everything uh, like uh, ready in the studio you don't have it polished uh, when you have the right idea and uh, you found the notes that express that you can already test it on unsuspecting civilians because I uh, remember exactly how we found the solution to exactly that puzzle uh, that Andrew was describing. One of the civilians, uh, when she heard what we came up on on playing piano, uh, and she didn't know anything about the concept, but she said that this uh, simple calm piano music is scary. And we, with Andrew, were like, yeah, this is what we were trying to it, achieve. It worked. Yeah, it worked. Yeah, it worked. Yeah. So, yeah, we were actually sending the uncompleted songs, uh, like, like recordings to our home recordings to our friends uh, to test the ideas and to see if, if they actually hear the emotions we want to portray there. Inspiration is always kind of a difficult topic to talk about, but um, like there's a lot of, there's a lot in the music and you have this strong concept, but what, what has uh, been your inspiration during the process? It truly is a hard question because we we don't really know. Uh, and so the thing is, we are ki- kind of... Um, we, we may use something sometimes to get in the flow or to get ideas, uh, often not explicitly. And uh, sometimes those ideas come from other music and it's just... Well, there there are influences, obviously, and some of them are quite direct. Like we, I listened to some uh, composition uh, piece written by someone else, and I hear like, oh, well, yeah, yeah, that, that idea, I could use that, and I change it and I put it there. But uh, this is not like inspiration. This is just, uh, or is it? I I don't know. Um, I'd say that. that uh, yes. Well, actually, it's kind of it's it's hard to explain because. Uh, we were we just gather, we start playing. We there is no inspiration yet. We are not inspired by anything. We start playing, and then we uh, kind of we have to induce it ourselves. We have to do the work. We have to make it sound good enough for us to get more and more involved. And then we when we are when we're getting in the flow, when we are start, starting to enjoy ourselves, enjoy the music itself, then uh, that is the inspiration, I guess. So. Um, would that work with without some other music, our, our uh, listening experience? No, of course not. But it's it's really hard to track what exactly uh, inspires us. It's like all the experiences mixed together in, in our heads. And it's different. The, the thing is, we've spent so much time re- writing and recording that, that um, a lot of different things at different moments of time clicked 
like sometimes you are in in one state of mind you are playing and nothing nothing happens you are just playing you are getting better on the instrument you are and and that's it and sometimes you are in some specific state of mind after something happened to you and it can be anything and then you start playing and uh, the magic happens for me so you just uh... you just have to be you just have to pay attention when when something is starting to hatch in your mind uh you you have to listen to yourself and uh, yeah for, for me it's usually for me it's usually yeah, it, it takes a lot of time uh to 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 gather like accumulate something and then i just take i don't know 12 to 16 hours i just sit and write as much as i can in one sitting to, and you said that i i i usually from i think for most of the songs i i did like a prototype with like know, 70 percent of the uh, material but it's usually happened in one day so i sat and write, wrote everything in one day i recorded everything i have i'm a, not a professional but i know what i'm doing while, while recording and mixing uh, i do this uh mock-up let's say but it happens i don't know once a year <laughs> basically so it accumulates and then releases in in 12 hours and then we work with that for 10 years so. <laughs> yeah 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 and then uh, when we are actually some some of the things uh so some of the things happens happen like that and some of them are like we we know that we want to play this after this we don't have a good transition for example or we know that we want this and this but we need something in the middle that is going to be that is going to kind of complete the thing that make the structure work all together and we know okay this should be more heavy or this should be more lightheaded or mellow or something so we have a usually i have a good understanding of what i want in the structure of the song and not very good idea what notes i actually want to play uh, there and so then we need to fill in those blanks with some specific things we just experiment what works so sometimes it's just uh, uh alex getting that a lot of accumulated material and some of them is just trying out the things that will uh bring it all together like some glue between the parts and um, some of those things yeah and, I'm the and for guy. that for that like uh for that kind of work of uh gluing it all together the inspiration is actually it's more of more of a theoretical things and concepts and structures that we know from other music and in in that part i I'd say sometimes classical, classical sometimes music, classical sometimes uh, yeah, composition, yeah, yeah. classical music, everything, because uh, that is where some, some of our background also comes from, and uh, we can use those ideas and concepts that we've learned before, and uh, they do work. Yeah, we we both finished uh, musical school, right? I I compose classical or uh, neoclassical music. For, for piano, so it, it's, it helps. Uh, generally, uh, those guys uh, come uh, <clears throat> not from hard music, and they usually generate stuff that uh, does not resemble anything. And I am the grumpy guy that uh, tells, okay, uh, right now you've hit, uh, for example, Pantera, or you've hit something else. And we need to reiterate that stuff because it's too obvious uh, for metal. Uh, I'm the guy with metal background behind me, all of that stuff. And uh, it's usually a no-go if I hear something that uh, I've already heard somewhere here. So it's usually like uh, Alex comes up with a big idea. Uh, Andrew does the math. And I either uh, you do the vetting. Uh, I, yeah. I do the vetting and uh, try to come up uh, with breadcrumbs that make uh, their overmind fuckery work. There's a lot to say on that because actually me and Andrew are in Kiev, and right now at the moment we are waiting for the air alert uh, to sound. I think uh, it will come in no more than an hour. Or maybe it's already there uh, and I'll see uh, some shelling out of my window, literally. Um, And this 
you know, these facts things. Uh, I don't have uh, to explain that uh, to explain all that to a Finnish guy. I think. <coughs> they're done that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, what I would say uh, that um, unfortunately, uh, I think that the Western world uh, will pay a lot of um, will pay a steep price for late waking up. Because this won't stop where I live. Uh, and uh, right, right now, it's, it's for for most of us here. It feels like it's going to last forever, and that's because we are uh, we are receiving a lot of aid. And if we got that same amount two years ago, it would be over now. Uh, and uh, but now it's not enough. Uh, and uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, there's going to be a lot more to come. And if we got that this year. It would be over next year, but it won't. It's going to uh -huh. last for, for a while. Mm -hmm. So oh. it's kind of, uh, it's a fucked up situation, but uh, we, we understand how it works and we understand why that happens. We are just not really uh, optimistic right now uh, about our situation and how long it's going to take. Uh, I'd say that, um, unfortunately, the times of uh, peaceful Europe are over. Just not everyone accepts it yet. But we have the music to help through the stages.